Watch out, Frank Castle. There's a new punishing vigilante in the city. I had a really great time tonight, Steve. Thanks for being such a great guy. No, it was my pleasure. Hey, you realize you just ran that stoplight? Uh, oops. I'm just having so much fun. Dear God, what's that in the road? One week for inattentive driving. What? No dates, no phone, no internet. What? What are you? I'm the grounder. They took his family. Nobody took us. We just grew up and moved out. They thought they could disobey me. They were wrong. It's time they all learn a valuable life lesson. Now he's got nothing left but his power to deal out chastisement in a major way. You're in big trouble, mister. You're grounded for two weeks. But I've got to work. I've got a mortgage to pay for. I'll lose my home. You should have thought of that before you stayed up past your bedtime. Ah, that's so not fair. All vigilantes need a costume. I've already got one. A Disneyland t-shirt and a fanny pack is not a costume. In an empty nest, one dad must dole out the punishment to anyone who deserves it. You're the grounder? I've heard about you. You and I? We are the same. We need to team up. What do they call you? The Spanker. You know, I think I'm good by myself. Good luck, though. Whatever it takes, we have to stop him. I would, boss, but I'm grounded. What you're doing is wrong. It's not justice. This isn't about justice. It's about discipline. The Grounder. He'll turn this car around. He'll do it. Hello and welcome to Sneaker Madness, the podcast about bad movies, by bad movie lovers, for bad movie lovers. I'm your host, Justin. I always have two people with me. One of them is named Sam. The other one is named Jackie. Hello to you. I prefer to use my official title, Dr. Jackie. Dr. Jackie and Sando Sam, the sandwich man. I mean, now that we've done over 200 episodes. That's right. Because it's 201. 201. 201. It's a big 201. Yeah. I, I mean, I think I've earned it. I think that's an area code someplace. The 201. Yo, we represent from the 201, dog. Is it Salt Lake? Uh, and then your ooh. face gets shot off. The SLC. Yeah. No! Might be. Yeah. I don't know. Shout out to shout out to the Momos downstairs. What's up? How's them 16-year-olds that you can bang legally? That's <laughs> creepy. How's your 3% beer, SLC? Yo's. Punks. It- as it turns out, other states have that, too. Yeah, I think Delaware. Delaware, you can bang 16-year-olds. No, it's like half of them. Oh. It's alarmingly high. Oh, that's... It sucks. That needs to change. That needs to change. <laughs> <laughs> that is not socially acceptable. Uh, people talk about uh, Trump's got an agenda about the Mexicans coming over the border and Hillary's got problems with Benghazi. No, the problem is... Adult men banging 16-year-old girls. That's a problem. That's a big problem. Don't do it. We'll talk about that later subsequently. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Which is like what we talk about during every single one of Jackie's episodes, your movies that she picks, because they all involve statutory rape for some reason. Uh, you know, I had high standards when I was a kid. Yeah. Those dreamy hunks driving around after college. High age standards. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> oh, I grew up in the 80s, and so I expect to marry an old man. Excellent. 1986 was like fucking feudal Japan. (laughs) (laughs) So this is our third movie in our superhero three-peat, which the Punisher is not really a superhero, but I guess we're doing comic books, whatever. Uh, So this will be the last one. Uh, If you didn't already listen to our Superman 4 episodes and Supergirl episodes, go back and check those out because they are hilarious to steal Sam's favorite saying. There are points in this movie where he is definitely past human ability okay the punisher may not be superhuman but yeah. and then in the comic book there's points where he has suits that really enhance his abilities i guess well. if batman's a superhero then yeah so is the punisher so is the punisher he's just more pissed off yeah he just doesn't have superpowers per se all right anyways uh this week on streaming do's and don'ts we've got three uh first up jackie and i watched this by ourselves on stars it's called frozen it is not about a disney princess It is about retards, literally people that are so stupid 
it's oh man, this movie pissed me off. But okay, imagine. Let me let me ask you, Sam. Sure. You've, you've gone up on the mountain before to do some snowboarding. Yes. Some, catch some narnar up Get there, up. you know. Yeah. Uh, what? Hit the powder. Hit the powder, bruh. Sounds like a cocaine reference. Oh yeah. Well, yeah, I, we I, should I, watch Better Off Dead. Yeah. <laughs> Charles Demar. Okay. This is pure one hundred percent. <laughs> okay, they don't do that in this movie. No. Instead, they get stuck on a ski lift. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's it? Yep. That's it. I got stuck on one for like an hour and a half. Once. They get stuck on there for a week. You could just... Can, is that physically possible, Sam? I, when I snowboarded, was a physically capable person that probably after the point where it starts to get dark mm-hmm. would... Start to explore my options. Okay, which they do. What would be your first... I feel like I could handrail it on mm-hmm. the top all the way to the cross member and then just slide down. Okay, they You could... can actually climb up most of them because they have ladder. They couldn't do that because the cables will cut your hands. They're what? too sharp. You were in gloves to go. It will cut through the gloves. It that will... happens in the movie. They have the platter pull. That's why the gloves are... Uh-huh. This so that no one had ever seen skiing or no done it. No one had or... ever seen skiing. Now, the other thing is... Is it first off? Let's back up to the major problem in this film. Can you get stuck overnight on a ski lift? Like, oops, they forgot about us. Is that physically possible? You know, a lot of the people, the lifties, are pretty stoned. So okay, yeah, but you still have to. Here's my problem: that you got a lifty at the top of the mountain. Yeah, he has to go home at some point. And he's like, "Whoa, I left that dude up there." Oh no! He takes his <laughs> snowmobile down the mountain along the path of the thing. It's the how you get back to the lodge. It's so stupid, they just shut it off and walk away. Yeah. Nobody comes down the mountain from the top. It's fucking retarded. Well, now, you know, actually, to go further, what generally happens, they don't leave the chairs out. Those chairs get gathered in one of the uh, hangers for the lift. I believe that's something that's modern. I believe the older ones, like from the 70s, did not do that. They had the ones from the 70s... We don't have modern ski hills, and they still gather them up. Most of the chairs at our ski hills are that way, and they get gathered. Now, if you're stuck up there and you can't climb up, what's your other option? Chair bail. Chair bail. Now, if you're going to chair bail, would you kick off your skis or snowboard first? No, you got to have them on. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Otherwise, it doesn't work. They all just kick them off. Whoa, these are hanging out. So everybody breaks their fucking legs. Yeah, the only the only way to negate the momentum of going down is to go a different direction. That is correct. Yes. It is so fucking stupid. They get eaten by wolves. It is just the most preposterous thing. Now, wolves on a ski hill. The oh Hey, guys, they shut down. Let's go check out the ski hill that might have some tasty morsels today, just this one time, and it's a giant ski hill. The wolves go right to them. No. Nope. Fucking retarded. And yeah. this movie has got high praise for what? its suspenseful thriller. It, oh, it's just so like, ooh, what a horrible situation. Not possible situation? Yeah, that's really horrible for something that can't fucking exist. And then you're fucking retard on top of it? No, this movie blows. Jackie? I also did not like this movie. Yeah, I gave it a fucking three. Oh, that's low for that's a, a do. Really, or for a do and don't film. That's really low. And I, I think you were supposed to feel bad for the lady that was trapped mm-hmm, on there with mm-hmm, him because mm-hmm. she peed her pants and then yeah. she got her hands stuck to the chair. And she pisses her pants. She doesn't hang her ass off the ski lift. And take a piss. Now she's got pissy pants that are going to freeze. Yep. You're fucking stupid. You will never feel your vagina again. Ever. Vagina. Your vagina is sealed shut. You might as well put some fucking... Take it to Virginia. Loctite in there, because you're never getting that thing open again. Loctite. Glue. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's good stuff. Yeah, it is. Bad stuff if you put it in your nethers. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> do not do Frozen. Next up, we all watch this one on Netflix. Matthew McConaughey, Paz Vega, Selma Hayek. Selma Hayek. Uh, Steve Zahn. Steve Zahn. No, it's not Selma Hayek. What's the third oh, one? Oh, no. Paz Vega, Selma Hayek, and uh, Penelope Cruz. Penelope Cruz. Yeah, and Steve Zahn. Um, this thing sucked. It's unfortunate when you have all of the makings of a classic stinker, uh-huh. and it's like a horse race. That this thing only needed three or four of its elements to come to fruition out mm-hmm. of about 20. Mm-hmm. And it's a horse race where the gates open and none of the horses come out. That is correct. That is a very good analogy. Nothing happens in this film. 
It's like sitting on a toilet waiting for a big turd to come and you've kind of been constipated and it kind of comes out a little bit and then it comes back and you're like... For for two and a half hours, you're on the toilet. And then all you get is... And then you feel better for yeah. whatever reason. Like, but that can't have been that can't have been it. Well, you don't feel good. No, you don't feel well. I mean, you're like, well, I guess I'm done. Yeah, I'm. Uh, huh. But that doesn't seem like it should be it. I should go to the doctor. Yeah, they're, yeah. They're gonna have to extract this turd out of me, which is how I felt after Sahara. I want that two and a half hours back. I how, hated this. It was awful. How did they not get any of it? Just like, none of it. Not any level of like emotion. No excitement. No caring. No nothing. Nothing is felt while watching it. And obviously Matthew McConaughey could give two fucks less about anybody else that was in this movie. And it was just really apparent. It should be as stupid as Congo. Like, yes, this thing tanked at the box office. Hey, well, it cost so much goddamn money. Yes. What did I look? $130 million? Something, something like, like that. that, yes. Preposterous number um, that they spent poorly because none of it goes to anything. I will say that there's not any CGI, so they spent it on... Well, there might be bullet CGI. I think and, there's some visual effects yes, in there. a little bit, but not like the mummy or something I like thought that. actually the cannonball was totally stupid Yeah, looking. stuff like that. Uh, ballistics. Uh, CGI ballistics, I think. But uh, God damn, do something. Two and a half hours. Yeah. My God, I have never seen a movie that boring. That should have been high adventure. High adventure. adventure. Treasure hunting by Navy SEALs with hot doctor when she's frankly it's supposed to be I don't really find Penelope Cruz hot but I don't think that was the problem with the movie is that I think that she's not hot it was just that the whole damn thing was boring I don't think adventure is a sentence or word you can use in a sentence with Sahara oh no. absolutely not it stinks do not under any circumstances watch Sahara it's no. not even like catwoman like catwoman's so bad that I can understand people laughing at it in points this is just nothing it's boring ugh Okay, last but not least, uh, (laughs) this is a fun one. I watched this by myself. Uh, We have all seen it. Everybody on the planet has seen this movie. Predator on Stars. What? Why would you be talking about Predator on Stinker Madness? Well, I'll tell you why. In 1987, would you care to guess the Metacritic score for Predator? Now, this is before Rotten Tomatoes and IMDb user ratings and, and basically, well, the internet. This is this before is, it had its revival, and everyone goes, you know, wow, because it's McTiernan that did it, mm-hmm. right? Yep. John, John McTiernan, McTiernan did a really good job with that movie, even though he almost killed everybody with malaria. Yeah. Uh, he almost froze Schwaz to death. And I think it was really around 2002 that it was having its revival of everyone really loved this movie. Oh, man. I, I was one of time. them. I bought it around then. I was like, yeah, I love this movie. Give me a number. 34. Ma- Ooh, close, Jackie. 28. 28. No, 36. So a little 36. bit higher. Uh Let me uh, give you guys some reviews here. Rita Kempley from the Washington Post. Robert Woodward worked there. Woodward and... Bernstein? Bernstein? Those are the playwright guys. (laughs) That's Rogers and Hammerstein. (laughs) Okay, anyways. A respect... No, it is Woodward and Bernstein or the uh, whatever... uh... The Post. The fucking Washington Post. Post. I fucking expect better. Frankly, scarier critters have checked into Roach Motels. What? The Predator? Then the fucking Predator? Are you kidding me? He's invisible with a fucking laser gun and swords on his arms, and then he well, takes off his mask, and he's, like, split jaw. You can list all of the stuff, but ultimately, what he is is a bar that other things are measured against. Yes, absolutely. Scarier critters have been measured and checked in a roach. No. Uh, I don't have a name on this one. Uh, another 30. Alternately, grisly and dull with few surprises. But- like, the entire plot... The entire plot of the movie is not revealed until halfway through it. No. That's a pretty big surprise when you realize these guys are getting chased by a fucking goddamn alien. Okay. Last but not least, Michael Williamton from the Los Angeles Times. Kind of a big deal. Big deal, Times. Ten. It's arguably one of the emptiest, feeblest, most derivative scripts ever made as a major movie studio, studio movie. There's no need to do a Mad Magazine movie parody of this. It's already on the screen. Huh. Are you fucking kidding me? 80s full of douchebags. Oh, okay. So speaking of not a douchebag, the one dissenting voice in this whole nonsense business, Roger Ebert. Oh, really? How about... 75. 
What a surprise. Moves at a breakneck, breakneck pace. It has a strong and simple characterizations. It is good location photography, terrific special effects, and it supplies what claims... What, it supplies what it claims to supply an effective action movie. There you go. That's a good review of the film. The movie is fucking awesome. It is shot so goddamn well. Yeah. And the acting for an action movie, it may be the finest bang, bang, shoot 'em up acting ever. Schwaz is actually fantastic in it. I've actually had to back down on an argument about e- efficiency in filmmaking only because when you're watching it, you're like, by the minute, uh, it's very efficient. Like, it gets everything it wants to do done in a such a schedule that's Mm -hmm. brilliant yeah uh but i've kind of backed down versus the original friday the 13th and and sort of a 10-year ongoing argument of one versus the other just in that friday the 13th if we want to talk about full efficiency there wasn't this sort of like mar of disaster overhanging the film Mm -hmm. because people got malaria on Uh predator and it took like four weeks longer i was almost froze to death oh it was a the shoot itself was sort of like a trial by fire mm-hmm. for everyone involved, but they all kind of came out of it. And McTiernan did some really good stuff after that. He did Die Hard the next yeah. year. Yeah, and I'm not a huge Die Hard fan, but I can't. Its contribution to the action genre is unmeasurable. Yeah, yeah. I they d- made action figures of it. Die Hard. Yeah, every movie is fucking Die Hard almost afterwards, right? I, yeah. For like ten years. I just wrote a book, and it's it's Die, die hard. hard. Yeah. All right, there you go. There's your streaming do's and don'ts. This week on the wild card, it's time to go back to an old classic that you guys hate. Pop quiz, hot oh, shot. God damn it. <laughs> okay, this one's going to be different. This is, uh, you don't both get to chime in. I'm going to assign a question, and you got, it's a 50-50 chance. I'm going to read you some comic book characters, and you have to tell me if they're real or made up. Okay. I'm okay. going to start with Sam. Sure. Your comic book character, just Batman. to start, is not Batman. <laughs> it's the Red Bee. Wishing to do more, wishing to do more to combat the criminals of Superior City, Oregon, than he could as an assistant district attorney. Richard Rick Raleigh created the costume identity of the Red Bee. He was a superb athlete, but he had no superpowers except for the ability to train and control bees. One of his bees was named Michael and was stored in a special pouch in his belt. Red Bee also carried a stinger gun. During his adventures, he battled the likes of Boss Storm. Dr. Mara, the Nazis, and the swordsmen Kalak and Ruga. I am it's just crazy enough to work real. Real! First appearance, hit comics number one, July nineteen forty, which it would eventually be uh, get bought out by DC and merge into it. Uh I was it DC or was it still Action Comics? It, no, point? no, no. It, DC existed. Or, okay. I mean, Action Comics existed, but they would all eventually become DC. Into yeah. DC, yeah. Jackie? Mm-hmm. Madam Fatal, Richard Stanton's late wife's former lover, kidnapped his daughter in revenge for being rejected in favor of Stanton. Stanton is a famous actor and uses his talent to disguise himself as an old lady, complete with walking stick, relying on his intelligence, physical fitness, and wits to fight crime. Madame Fatal also had a parrot named Hamlet, which helped him remember vital information. I like the superhero name. Madame Fatal. Uh-huh. Or Madame Fatale. Fatale. But this sounds fucking retarded, so I'm going to uh-huh. say no. He's not a real one. Real! Yeah. Oh. Crack Comics number one. Also from May of 1940, well, just a month before Red Bee. I was going to, like, where I was thinking it had to be real is because of the sentiment, well, the only real woman superhero would just have to be a man dressed up like a woman. Yes. It's, yeah. it's a man dressed up as an old lady <laughs> yeah, fighting like... crime. Okay, Sam. Sure. Matter Eater Lad. A member of the Legion of Superheroes, he came from the planet Bismol, where all of the food substances contained particles that made them inedible, causing the inhabitants to evolve an ability to eat all matter as a survival mechanism. No. Not real? Not real. Pepto-Bismol? Oh, come planet on. Bismol. Was it part of like a Pepto-Bismol no. cartoon? No. This is, he was an actual DC guy. He, he was part of the Legion of Superheroes. Yeah. Superman was in the fucking Legion of Superheroes. Yes. He could eat stuff good. That was his power. Uh, first appearance, Adventure Comics, 303, December 1962. Huh. Bismol. Yeah, I was like, that what? They're selling soap, basically. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Uh, Jackie, last one. Okay. I got to get at least one right to tie. US-1. Ulysses 
Solomon Archer fights evil in the highways of America in his tricked out semi truck to avenge the death of his brother, Jefferson Hercules Archer, who was murdered by a sinister trucker known as the Highwayman, who sold his soul to the devil for a satanic 18 wheeler. God damn it. I want to say you made this one up because I know you have this thing with truckers. <laughs> so I'm going to say that this one is not a real superhero. Real! They're all real. <laughs> First appearance, USA 1, coming at you, May 1983 from Marvel Comics. Marvel, you suck. Yeah, so all of them are real. Now, this US 1 what thing- What was his handle? Uh, US 1. Oh. Uh, his real name was Ulysses Solomon Archer, USA was his initials. I have got to tell you guys more about this USA okay. 1. Uh, his parents were killed in a crash. So they were adopted by Papa Wheelie and Wide Load Annie, Ugh. owners of a truck stop. Jefferson, his little brother- Takes a job driving trucks so U.S. can go to college, but he hates him for it. A group of aliens come to Earth, seeking to recruit truck drivers to become starship pilots. Led by Al, Al the alien, Al, first two letters, so stupid. They wanted to recruit U.S., but got Jefferson instead, since to them, all humans look alike. They customized his truck <laughs> with advanced technology and taught him how to use it. Jefferson worried that the aliens would realize their mistake, so he tried to keep his distance from U.S. In order to do this, he convinced U.S. he was dead, and he became the highwayman, naming his truck the Black Rig. So the whole thing is U.S. is looking for his brother, and to avenge him, he's going to kill the highwayman. His brother is the highwayman. I have more. No, just keep going. I <laughs> After college, U.S. went on a ride with Jefferson when they ran off the road by the Black Rig. The truck was actually under Jefferson's control with a dummy in the seat. Boy, oy, oy. This should be a fucking that. movie. The truck went over a cliff and U.S. was severely injured in the crash. Now, here's where it gets really stupid. Oh. The dazed, the dazed, looked up, the dazed U.S. looked up to the cliff to see the highwayman and some demons mocking him. I guess some there's demons? demons. The demons were actually the aliens that were beginning to realize their mistake and were trying to contact U.S., the aliens took U.S. to a hospital where they replaced his shattered skull with a metal one that could pick up CB transmissions because it's trucker. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Jefferson then persuaded the aliens to keep him and let him prove that he was better than U.S. Jefferson then posed as an old trucker to spread rumors of highwayman having a demonic past. U.S. chased after the old man while being attacked by other trucks and being bombed by blimps. When he finally caught up to Jefferson, he found out that the old man was actually the highwayman. It made it 12 issues. <laughs> huh. I would love to have a copy of yeah. US 1. I, well, since we're talking about weird and obscure comics, I just read one that blew my fucking mind. Badger. Badger. Yeah, Badger's fucking crazy. Published by... I can't remember who was running it at this point. It got picked up by they. It's eventually bought out. It's one of the first. Uh, I think it was one of Image's first titles, oh, okay. or at least somebody that was part of the founding of Image. I don't know if Badger was part of Wildstorm, maybe. Yeah, it. Uh, he's just a schizophrenic that assumes the identity of Badger of a Badger to, or Badger the Badger, the crime fighter. But then, does he have the powers of the Badger? He has the powers of a guy who's schizophrenic. All right. Okay. That's interesting. And, uh, so yeah, if he gets bit by a cobra, really, he's fucked. Hmm. Really something else. No more fucked than anybody else. Not a not a badger. Well, what? If I get bit by a badger or a cobra. If a honey badger gets bit by a, poise, well, a venomous snake, a he goes to sleep. This is just like a badger badger. Yeah. Honey badgers oh. are not badgers. like badgers badgers. Oh, okay. Like North American badgers. Because I was going to say, I saw that on YouTube, the yeah. honey badger videos. Yeah, everybody's Which that's, that. Those are definitely... That's science. You should, that's science right there. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All right, Sam, tell us about Punisher War Zone. Well, at first, there was some war happening. Mm. And then this guy started running around with this stick with some nails out of it. And he was like, do you want a spanking? Have you seen this movie? I think you've seen this movie. It's, yeah, it's verbatim. So that's the <laughs> first four sentences of the screenplay. Oh, see, I haven't seen this movie, so now I'm excited. Uh, it was made in 2008. It was the final release date of Punisher Warzone. Okay. After the whirlwind non-success of Lions Gates, more aptly Lions Gates, 2004 <laughs> Punisher, it was announced that the DVD sales were strong enough to warrant a sequel. Oddly, the studio would almost go out of business in 2012. Oh, my God. With Wait. decisions. No, just that, like, oh. they're like, well, that didn't work. Mm -hmm. Oh, the DVD sales were strong. Really? Kind of. Let's make a sequel. Yeah, right. 
And those are the decisions that almost put them under. Writer-director Jonathan Hensley was back on board to direct with Tom Jane, reprising his role as Frank Castle. The script this time was being worked on by a writer independent of Hensley, as Hensley had written the first one. It would seem that early drafts would cause the departure of Hensley. This I should think to be a tall order to write a script that would chase off the guy who wrote Armageddon. Because Hensley wrote Armageddon. Right. Well, he doesn't want to miss a thing. That's the same. That's every time we tell that joke when Armageddon comes <laughs> yeah, up. We yeah, got to yeah. come up with new material. <laughs> Talk about blowing up asteroids and yeah. shit. Well, Jane stayed on board like a trooper, and at one point had gained 12 pounds of raw muscle. Eventually, a later version of the script would chase off Jane, who would rather and subsequently star in movies like The Mist, Mutant Chronicles, and Drive Hard. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's got to be one doozy of a script. <laughs> After being turned down by a handful of directors, they eventually hire Lexi Alexander. Alexander quit the second she saw the script. Damn. After Lionsgate gave her full creative control of the project, she came back on board. Alexander's previous film was Green Street, which holds the distinction of being the second film to win both the Jury Prize and the Audience Award at South by Southwest. Mm -hmm. She has, however, subsequently had trouble securing funding for her movies after The Punisher War Zone, which is unfortunate. Mm. Yeah, it is. Uh, however, she could have done a better job with this one. Ah, oh, man, I don't know. This one's a special gem. <laughs> it is a special gem. It like seems like special there... retarded gem. Oh, you just, well, wait. just, just yeah, wait. It's yeah. going to be something. Yeah. yeah, it's. It seems like there's been abundance of writers attached to the film to the point where it's really hard to figure out who actually wrote this. Mm-hmm. I can see that. Ray Stevenson had his first major break with John Milius's HBO production of Rome. He also wrote The Streak. No, that's. <laughs> <laughs> God, gotcha, damn Ray it. Stevens. Yeah. Oh, that's so dumb. That is so <laughs> dumb. That's as dumb as Ray Stevens, Jackie. So dumb. Good. Good night. All right. Ironically, Ray Livingston did the streak in Ray- the first season of uh, Rome. Stevenson? Yeah, Ray we Stevenson. We can't even get the Rays straight. <laughs> Ray Livingstone's the guy from uh, Band of Brothers. And Office Space. Ray Livingston or Ray Livingstone? You just got two different Rays now. Oh, Jesus. I'm Ray Jellystone. Anyway. Ray Parker Jr. Ray Parker Jr. Well, he got his uh, big break in Rome, but he was probably noticed first for the Antoine Fuqua production of King Arthur. Uh, with... No, I don't remember him being in that at all. I remember him in Rome, of course. Yeah, he's in King Arthur. Titus Polo. Yeah, but he's before that, he was in with... King Arthur with... Uh, Sean Connery and Richard Gere. Oh no, not that one. Oh, that's okay. that's uh, first, uh, that's first night. Yeah. That's first night. That's one of the worst movies ever made. Yeah, well, it's coming up. King Arthur's got uh, Clive Owen and yes, Kira Knightley. Right. Yes, yes, yes. And yes. every time, like I always say, because it's like the tenth time I brought that movie up, because there's always somebody in it that I forgot about. Like Mads Mikkelsen is in that. I think it's really easy to forget about. It is, and there's a lot of people that are in that movie. Unfortunately, mm, okay. or fortunately, I don't know. I'll have to watch it again and decide whether I like it. Maybe fall asleep. Well, like Chris Evans, he would jump this Marvel role for another and begin playing Volstagg in the Thor series. Mm-hmm. Unlike Chris Evans, the sight of Stevenson leaves panties quite dry. <laughs> <laughs> not, not those three uh, French birds in yeah. uh, the transporter. Yeah, I'm, being, I'm being a little hard. I bet he does. I bet, <laughs> I bet he does. All right. I bet there's uh, there's panties out there that get pretty wet with He's Stevenson. He's a big dude. He's a very large man. He is. He's a tall guy. Well, now we need to talk about the two finer actors in the film. Oh, boy. Dominic West. (laughs) Dominic West is most notable for being in 56 of the 60 episodes of The Wire, the show that, if you haven't seen, have ruined your own pathetic life. I haven't seen it. Oh, no. (laughs) Me neither. Me neither. That's why we're in a basement recording. (laughs) Because we didn't watch The Wire. We could have been somebody's. Yeah. Also, uh, I didn't notice him as Palace Guard in Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Mes- no, Menace, because no. I was asleep. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He was in Chicago, which I didn't see because I have a penis. <laughs> you weren't missing anything. That movie yeah. sucked balls. <laughs> yeah, one best picture. It, that's, uh, yep. He had a significant part in Mona Lisa Smile, which I did put into the VCR, but by minute four was just staring at the wall. Oh, I watched that one. It was okay. Yeah. That's funny because just two <laughs> weeks ago, you guys both said that that movie sucked. <laughs> yeah, I didn't like you it. You guys are fucking hypocrites. I just said that I would rather stare at the wall than watch it. You, In fact, your your exact words were, you know, I just didn't get that film. You said, you know what? It wasn't very good. And now you just said, it's okay. Uh, well, I still stand by I didn't get it because I was. It was it's <laughs> impossible to watch. Either way. I didn't see it. 
That's the one with Julia Roberts, right? Yeah. Yeah, she's got a big face. Most people like me saw West as the douchey senator in the 300. He has recently returned to television for the renewed acclaim in the Showtime original The Affair. I've heard that's good, actually. Yeah. I have zero interest in watching it. Doug Hutchinson is someone who I've seen in a lot, but when I look at his filmography, it seems like I shouldn't have. Justin and I probably remember him best as Eugene Victor Toombs in the X-Files. Oh, yeah. Victor Toombs. He's Wait. the he's the guy that can go through small spaces. He's in two episodes. Yeah, that's true. I was thinking... He Victor... hibernates and eats people's livers. Victor Toombs is uh, the vulture in the Spider-Man comics. Or maybe... No, that's Adrian Toombs. I'm yeah. sorry. Victor... It's <laughs> Eugene Victor Toombs. Victor Von Doom. Oh, boy. Yeah. Well, Hutchinson made his biggest splash. Not in acting... But in 2011, when at the age of 50, he got married to a 16-year-old Courtney Stodden. Derp. Did he do it in uh, SLC? Huh? Vegas. No. Oh. Well, wait, you, you can't you can... get married in Vegas at 16? You can with you parental consent. You can get consent. married anytime. What the fuck? My so... parents got married when they were 15 and Yeah, but 16. they were both underage. He's a grown-ass man. Yeah, you... but as long as your parents sign off on it, you're good. So you can't bang 16-year-olds no matter where you live just as long as you're fucking married? As long as you're married, yeah. And their parents say, hey, it's okay. Yeah, dude. Uh, no! If I ever have a daughter, as soon as she hits 16, I'm going to be like, up on the auction block with you, lady. Yeah, get the fuck out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> now auctioning off this fine 16-year-old that likes donuts. Ugh, that's awful. So, yeah, that's what he did other than this movie. And He pulled a fucking Jerry Lewis, or Jerry Lee Lewis. Oddly, they're still married after like five, six years almost. Actually, no, Jerry Lee Lewis married his cousin. Cousin who was, who was 16, yeah. yeah. Okay. And he was only 30. Uh, it's still pretty Not, It's grody. his cousin, though, it's pretty is grody. the problem. Yeah, which is grodier? Cousin, yeah. Okay. Yeah, cousin's grodier. I'm only going to talk about Wes and Hutchinson in addition to Stevenson, as Lexi Alexander made a push to get Wes back after he dropped out of the production and then was able to secure Hutchinson on a personal appeal, which leads us to keep an eye out for. Whether the two of them perform the worst scene in the history of acting. <laughs> Do we get to guess which scene it is? Oh, you'll, oh, you'll know. know. You'll know. All there's right. Well, I'm no going to guess, and then you guys can tell me if I'm right. <laughs> no, you. there's not. You'll just be like, um, wait, wait, no. <laughs> that one. No. It's that one. Also, keep an eye out from Wayne for Wayne Knight of Jurassic Park and Seinfeld fame. Hmm, who's Wayne he? Knight's Newman. Oh, yeah. Okay. He's microchip in this. That's right. He is in this film. Eh. Uh. I don't know if this is streaming anywhere. It is, I promise you now, it is worth owning on, on DVD. It's so cheap at your uh, pawn store. Nobody liked this movie. You know, I think the main problem with it is is that it was marketed horribly. I remember having no interest when this came out. Like, I'm out on that. Yeah. And then you and I, you, I think you kind of felt the same way. Like, that looks fucking awful, stupid awful. Like, I have no... I, I've been, I was afraid of watching it. And then we put it in, and within the first 10 seconds, we were like, fucking shit yeah this is ridiculous this is the real stuff now i guess a secondary keep an eye out for which i didn't write down is that uh one of the biggest problems that this production suffers is that there's really no point when they decided after jane left that they were going to do a sequel with a different punisher or mm -hmm. if they were just rebooting the series four years later again it is quite not clear and they never made that decision so you can't really tell yep if this is a reboot or a uh a sequel and to that point with the other indecisions apparently after lexi alexander gets done with it they made a bunch of decisions after her uh decisions had been made mm -hmm. they redid the score completely sure without her permission and things yeah. like that so no, it's a botched job this movie it's awesome though uh I've got are there keep... boobs no no i've got to keep an eye out for possibly jackie's favorite thing that will happen in any movie ever there's a chance that there's something that happens in this movie that will become your most favorite thing of all time. Better than that lady getting hit by a cannonball yesterday? That was pretty awesome. Oh, oh, on Black Sails, yeah. <laughs> that was so cool. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty cool. Okay, uh, check it out. Come back to us on Monday, and in the meantime, get to the chopper. Get to the chopper! Which is said twice in Predator. Fans of Stinker Madness, iTunes thinks you don't like us. What? How is that possible? Well, it's because you haven't given us a review yet. Go to Stinker Madness on iTunes and take just a couple seconds to rate and review us there. While you're at it, hit up Stitcher.com as well. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter at forward slash Stinker Madness. 
and email us at talk at secretmadness.com. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for listening and get to the chopper. Uh, Wait, did we decide that it's okay to interrupt or interject <laughs> when Sam's talking? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just don't let him finish sentences. Don't let I him mean, finish let, sentences. Let him yeah. finish sentences. Well, yeah. Challenge accepted. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> Can I interrupt you? Sure. All right. Well, I don't have anything. Proceed. Right now, but I will later. <laughs> later when I want later. to interrupt you, I will. Cause I'm the king of wishful thinking. That's a pretty good song. What's your favorite song? Um, no, I think it's still hang the sign up on the door, saying don't disturb this groove. I'm a weirdo, shoo I'm so into you. I'm so into you now, baby. <laughs> See, you know all the words. I thought you said you'd never heard that before. Yeah, you played it for me like a couple of times. You, I played it one time, and now you know all the words? Yeah. All right. Hmm. Don't disturb this groove. It just instantly goes in the vault, huh? You sang it for like a week, dude. Yeah, I was pretty hard up on that song when we were in Long Beach. Because <laughs> <laughs> everybody on the fucking boat was like banging around and making all sorts of goddamn noise. And I was like, dude, don't disturb this groove, man. Hang the sign up on the door. I'm trying to watch some goddamn basketball. <laughs>